Hi, everyone. We are uh, so pleased that you were able to join us this morning, this evening, uh, whatever time it is on your end. We are very excited to welcome you all to the 10th workshop in our Get Engaged Alumni Speaker Series. My name is Shadon Nassar, and I'm the Get Engaged Alumni Initiative Coordinator. And we started this series to bring exposure to Get Engaged Alumni experiences and share that uh, with all of you. So today I'm very excited to um, be welcoming our distinguished 2023 Get Engaged alumna, Bisan Safi. Bisan, uh, I will be introducing her in a moment, but uh, Bisan will be delivering an impactful session today titled, Get Your Green On, Bring Sustainability and Fun to Your Projects. So this uh, workshop will delve more into environmental sustainability in a fun and a creative manner. And I'm pretty sure all of you will find it very beneficial and useful uh, in your pursuits. And uh, as for Bisan, Bisan is a senior molecular genetics student at Al Quds Bart College in Palestine. She is a get engaged um, alumna of the and an alumna of the OSUN leadership program for the year 2023-2024. As a co-leader of ECHO AQB, the Environmental Sustainability Club at AQB Al Quds Bart College, for the past three years, Bisan founded Basita. Little Big Steps, a project aimed at reconnecting people with the land and transcending tra traditional methods of delivering environmental knowledge in Palestine. Through her work, Bisan has developed her skills in leading environmental projects and connecting them to diverse areas of interest. She has also been a member of the MENA Youth Climate Change Negotiators Program for two years and recently joined the newly founded Palestinian Youth Climate Change Negotiators Program. We're very excited to have Bisan on board, and we look forward to learning more from her extensive experience in the field and learning more about the growing global environmental movement. Um, so Bisan, without further ado, I pass the floor to you, and thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Also, please remember, if you have any questions at any point, you can go ahead and include them in the chat box, and we will get back to you towards the end of the session. Bisan, the floor is yours. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Shadon, for this lovely introduction um, and welcome all here today. Um, I'm going to start with saying um, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, as um, Brian and Shadon always say. I'm very happy to be here, very happy to have you all here today. Um, I'd love to start by asking if that is possible and you could open your cameras, please um, do so. Um, it's just, I'm not going to be demanding, I'm not going to ask you to answer all my questions, but it's going to help us feel more connected here in Zoom. Um, and I, uh, people already started doing that, but I'd appreciate it if you could send your name, um, your institution, where do you live, and if by any chance you work on any project or have any interests, please type them in the chat so we could all know and like try to take examples from the chat and like integrate them into the project or into the presentation, sorry. So just give me a moment to share my screen and we'll start. Well, I guess you can see my screen now, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, thank yeah. you. Um, so as Shadon said, um, I'm just going to introduce myself again very quickly. My name is Bisan. I'm a senior molecular genetics student at AQB. I lead EcoAQB, the Environmental Sustainability Club. I co-lead it with um, another um, fantastic colleague. Um, and I also initiated Basita Little Big Steps and presented it in um, the Get Engaged conference in 2023. Uh, and um, also part of the MENA Youth Climate Change Negotiators Program and the Palestine Youth Climate Change Negotiators Program. And I'm hopefully traveling to um, Azerbaijan next week to attend um, the annual climate change conference um, that is hosted by the UNFCCC. Um, thank you again so much, Shadon, for the invitation. Uh, and I'm very happy to be back to a Get Engaged platform. Um, and if there are any Get Engaged 2023 folks around here, shout out to all of you. Um, so before we start, um, let's um, kick things off with a very quick activity to get our creative brains like warmed up. 
So I'm sharing now a series of images and I'd like you to think about what they represent. Act like Shadden didn't say anything about the objective or the description of this workshop. And just think of um, the pictures and what do you think they represent? Um, let's just take a moment or two to, to look at them. Um, you can actually, you're welcome to open your mic and uh, like tell us what you think um, or just type it on the chat privately or to the group chat. Um, please, uh, Shakila, um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. You can go. Shakila? Uh, hello, ma'am. How are you doing? I'm okay, good, thank um, you. Well, thank you so much. Well, I have um, some idea about these pictures. I think all of them are related to the environment. Uh, first and second one, so it's obvious the meaning. And third one, I think it is about maybe this uh, statue. It is made of uh, something like wastes, the irons that people, they have uh, thrown. Number four and number five. So number four, um, I think her cloth is made of plastic or maybe there can be the other types of wastes. Uh, that it can portray the idea of this that uh, we should not uh, waste uh, anything, uh, the re uh, the resources. And number five uh, in here, it shows that uh, how the world is uh, going to change. And uh, from uh, the green part to getting the west um, view. And I think uh, as well, it shows that our world or climate is in danger, that we must uh, think of it and uh, take steps for this. Yeah, this much. Thanks for giving me time to speak. Thank you. you that, that comment is amazing. Thank you so much for all what you said. And we also have in the chat, first picture shows the man who takes the picture of nature. It shows how nature amazes us. I think all of these pictures are related to in the environment and nature. So you're all correct um, uh, that these pictures um, are related to environment and nature. We could see in the first picture a filmmaker who is taking um, or documenting nature. In the second picture, we could see um, a poster for a project or a climate music project that uses um, music uh, next to um like music and like science guided um, knowledge and visuals to inspire climate action. Um, in the third picture, we actually see a sculpture of Tiji Vara made from over 1000 pieces of um, metal by a Bolivian artist. Um, in the fourth picture, we see a fashion show um, done by using recycled fabric. Um, in the fifth picture, and this is the only picture I found like could represent uh, how environment is also integrated into human rights and social work. And we actually have environmental lawyers now at our time. Um, so I thought that we could take these examples to show us how the environment is not only like um, about nature or it's not only about ex environmental experts or scientists, um, it gets into all the fields. Um, so today we'll be talking about how to start thinking of integrating uh, environmental um, issues into our projects across all kinds of fields, whether it's science, arts, business, um, engineering, um, and how can we make them fun and engaging um, at the same time. So um, you hear me saying uh, environmental challenges all the time. Um, and you can maybe probably type in the chat what comes to your mind first when you hear environmental challenges. Um, maybe think about what stands to you locally and type it in the chat. Uh, but environmental challenges um, like are issues or complex issues that arise from how we humans started like interacting with uh, nature. Uh, they could include pollution, biodiversity, uh, resource depletion, um, all types of newly arising issues 
um, that are affecting us in every way. Uh, pollution can be air pollution, soil, noise pollution even, and all of these affect directly the ecosystems and our human health. Um, it's biodiversity loss, for example, uh, due to deforestation, climate change, and pollution. Uh, and overusing natural resources, for example, like um, fossil fuels, water, uh, and minerals, these lead all to uh, threatening our ecosystems. Um, a key term that all, you also hear a lot um, is climate change, and it refers to the warming of our planet uh, caused by greenhouses as a, like a, a literal definition of a climate change, kind of. It, um, it, it like refers to the warming of our planet caused by greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, for example. It affects weather patterns, food production, um, health. Um, it also affects us in every way. And it's very interesting to read about it and like have more knowledge about it. But before I proceed, I'd like to say that um, I can't proceed without mentioning anything about Palestine or what's happening right now. Um, Gaza is a life example of how um, they are trying to destruct every act of life here in Palestine. Uh, more than 5,000 people were killed um, from be the beginning of the last war in Gaza. Um, huge areas of lands are dis now destroyed. They are unlivable. 99% of water in Gaza is undrinkable. And things don't only happen in Gaza. We're now in the um, olive picking season in Palestine and many people are prevented from like going to their land and like picking their olives as they usually do because it's a very important season in Palestine. Um, and this is an inspiration for me and for other environmental activists here to keep working for climate justice and to keep connecting environment um, and environmental issues into our different projects, no matter what we're studying or doing. Um, but yeah, um, climate or environmental issues, as I said, require solutions from multiple fields. Um, and I'd like us to know that it's an interdisciplinary approach. Uh, we can think of we can think of environment with biology, with science, with technology, with psychology, with um, human rights and social work. Uh, with education, with law and policy. Um, for for example, I'm attending, I said I'm attending COP, uh, and COP is a climate change uh, conference, but it's merely about politics. So law and policy are crucial for creating environmental regulations. Technology is now important too. Business and finance too. If you think about it, um, they, uh, they see if, um, like they check if projects are feasible or not. Um, they, uh, like, try to support uh, sustainable economic models nowadays using business and uh, finance. So environment is everywhere. Uh, and this is why we need to keep thinking of how to integrate environmental issues uh, into any project. You might ask, why not do we leave it to the experts um, or treat it as a, a standalone project? Uh, but this is not a, the case uh, because um, the situation is urgent. Um, we are not talking about future destruction. We're not talking about future things that are happening in the future and that we need to be aware of. No, we're living these environmental challenges. We're in the present. We're living climate change and it's affecting us already. It's affecting our daily lives. It's affecting many people's lives. That's an important point to think about when we say um, environmental issues. Um, but in terms of our projects, it's very important to think of it uh, because it increases relevance and longevity of our projects. So as I said, they are environmental issues are global challenges that impact every sector. Um, so integrating them in our projects makes our projects stay relevant and adaptable because the world is increasingly prioritizing sustainability and sustainable projects. So that's an, like, an added value to our projects. Um, and you can you can think of it as a trend. Um, projects that address sustainability, projects that address environmental issues now are more likely to gain attention and support from funders, from communities, from um, from like community members and collaborators who can um, or who value environmental responsibility. One of the things that we should also keep thinking about is how it builds social and ethical responsibility. We're coming through OSA and OSA. Um, definitely encourages civic engagement. And this is a core civic engagement value to build social and ethical responsibility. It's important for us if we're working on any project to address 
um, different issues to show a commitment to ethical practices uh, to enhance credibility and like trust among um, members of our projects, among stakeholders that we mention all the time, um, and the public, of course, because we all aim to um, like raise high in our projects. Uh, in addition to that, um, talking again about uh, environmental issues would attract broader support and collaboration. And I'm gonna mention collaboration a lot because collaboration is at the core of it. Um, collaboration uh, drives innovation and creativity. And um, like you guys just sitting together, thinking together with other people to bring environmental issues um, to the ground, it's like next to your projects, um, you're gonna gain so much uh, support from the community. Um, many people now actively support initiatives with clear sustainable goals. So if you have these goals in your project, you're gonna get that support that you're looking for. So always search for eco-conscious projects. And this is gonna definitely provide a unique advantage for you, not only now, but in the future, because in the future, uh, we are preparing for more, a more like stricter environmental regulations because many industries are moving to that now. Um, so projects that already like incorporate sustainable practices now have a plus in their bios. Uh, and definitely one of the things that we should think about is encouraging environmental awareness and responsibility because um, we as a new generation, I believe, or at least in Palestine, um, we're not the target audience for environmental knowledge. And thus it's very important to start now spreading that knowledge um, and to reach new audience, uh, to spark collaborations with others. So this is how we should think of integrating environmental issues in our projects. We should be very convinced of the idea of having environmental themes and having environmental, it, it could be as simple as, for example, having an outdoor activity or having your session outdoor, if you have a project or an event, um, or you're hosting a workshop, for example, and it's okay to, to do it outdoors, just do it outdoors. It's very simple. Like we need to start thinking that it's not that complex. We don't have, we don't need to be environmental experts. We don't need to have that much knowledge to um, to incorporate into the field. Um, I know I've talked a lot. Uh, so before we proceed, um, I'd like us to uh, drop an emoji or two in the chat to show how we're feeling about environmental issues so far. Um, if you're comfortable, feel free to open your mic and elaborate on the images that you sent to the chat. Um, yeah. I'll be looking into the chat to see how creative you are with the images. Oops. Oh, we have an image here. Jesse. Christina, what do you think? The word is sleeping? <laughs> nice emoji. <laughs> oh. <laughs> cool. Do we have any other images that would represent? the genital idea of climate change, environmental issues in your mind. What do you think of it? I like the images, guys, look at the chat. <laughs> and if you'd like to open your mic again, you're more than welcome. Okay, thank you guys. <laughs> Keep sending emojis. Okay, so let's continue. I was talking all the time with the mic closed. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Thank you so much for all the images in the chat. Just keep sending them um, through the session. So uh, when we think of um, like how could we integrate um, these ideas into our projects without changing the whole concept of our project. Like if we're working in a human rights project, if we're working on an arts project, um, writing project, filmmaking, whatever, 
how can we integrate environmental themes without changing the whole concept and the whole like values um, of uh, our project? Uh, we can think of generalist steps and we can think of practical steps. So uh, whenever you plan a project, maybe you are used to planning um, like, uh, like to have a monthly plan or a yearly plan. Um, in that plan that you make for your project, set eco-friendly go goals e uh, like early on. You are setting goals for your project, integrate eco-friendly goals into that project. Define your sustainability objectives. As you start planning, set these clear, set them clear. Um, maybe you could say it's minimizing waste from your events. Maybe it's uh, choosing eco-friendly materials if you have an art project, for example. So defining these would really help um, shape the, your project's direction. And also one of the things I like to do with other projects is incorporating a green checklist in your planning. So develop a checklist uh, with environmentally friendly actions, uh, like she, again, reusable, like choosing reusable materials, um, reducing paper use, like I can tell you something that happened um, a month ago. So um, AQB, al Sport College, hosted um, the club's fair. Uh, and usually in the club's fair, everyone like, prints out their brochures, their posters, all these stuff and have them on the table. People take them, read them, and then throw them away. So that's not really nice for the environment, let's say. So one of the things that we do as Eco EQB, and we like recommended that other clubs also do it in the fair, is having them having them in a barcode. So people could take them as a picture or have them like save them in their phone and read them later. But we're reducing like paper waste. Um, and that's that was a, a good way, a good approach to reduce waste. And I think Shadon in one of the clubs fairs, you were there and you saw how we like made these barcodes. Um, and everyone liked that idea. So you could start from there and then inspire others. Um, in addition to that, you can uh design materials with minimal environmental impact, like uh whatever posters again or brochures you like um distribute throughout the year have them, for example, online, uh, instead of having them, as I said, printed out. Um, and then looking at the bigger picture of the uh, project, align your project's values, align your project mission with environmental topics. Uh, for example, also that's an example from EcoAQB, we were supposed to have a breast cancer awareness um, campaign like as a fair uh, last week, um, last, yeah, last week. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't do it, but uh, the idea was to have it as a fair in order to have different tables and different booths for different clubs and collaborations. So it's a breast cancer awareness campaign. The main collaborator is the science club, but Eco EQB recommended or suggested that we can also collaborate in that event uh, by connecting breast cancer with the environment and how environmental factors affect breast cancer. The arts committee was also part of that event. Uh, by um, helping develop or write messages for breast cancer um, patients. So this is how you can think of always, always try to collaborate. Collaboration doesn't only like um, kind of create new ideas and new like creative ideas, but it would also help you sustain kind of your project and make it uh, live longer. Uh, you kind of encourage each other when you collaborate with other people around you. It shouldn't just be, um, it shouldn't just be like, clubs at your college, maybe um, like search also for community partners around the college schools, um, green organizations, like um, these organizations. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to mention and one of the things that we at AQB love so much is brainstorming. And I think I'm gonna praise and compliment AQ, AQ, AQB now, but we brainstorm very well. And this is how our ideas come out to light. So brainstorming is key in terms of like is a is a key thing if you want to work on uh, collaborations or if you want to work on integrating new things into your projects that you don't feel they have a connection to your project. Just sit down with with yourself or with others and try to bring up ideas, bring up ideas, and then show their connections together. And you gotta have something at the end. Um, for example, you could, if you wanna integrate an environmental theme into your project, you could ask yourself first, what are the unique environmental challenges in my region? Who is my audience? And what is the best way to engage them? Know your audience well. Another like key message we 
also do well at Eco EQV, we know our audience. So, for example, do they come for food? Is the people around you in college, do, do they care about food? Then bring food to your project um, or to your events. And Shannon like noticed that once we did that. Um, and make that food have a concept. Like bring it from um, local farmers, make it like organic food. Uh, also, one of the things that we love doing and people love doing is um, doing like some hands-on experiences. People love working with their hands. People love creating new things. So try to integrate your project's ideas into these stuff. Um, so these are some pictures from EQB events. Um, for example, the first picture, uh, we succeeded in uh, like, um, engaging with 50 students at this event. They were able to make their uh, salad from uh, organic local, like organic local food from local farmers. Um, on the second picture, you could see a student sitting by, standing by a tree and we had a scavenger hunt. So we adapted a game uh, that usually people play and like try to create um, one that's close to it, but it's called a planned scavenger hunt, an around campus scavenger hunt. So we try to gamify, we try to to give it uh, through storytelling. Um, we like whatever the audience was, we try to change. Uh, we collaborate with Melodies for Palestine with a music club. Christina is here. Um, we collab collaborate with them to have music in, in our events. We collaborate with the Creative Expression Initiative to have outdoor activities. Um, so try to bring to your, like try to know your audience more. When you know your, your audience, you're gonna come up with ideas definitely. Um, and like bring people to your projects. Um, so uh, I thought maybe, I also talked a lot, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I thought we could do a very quick, um, activity uh, before we wrap up. It's called Mix and Match. So I'm going to give you, um, I actually, if anyone has any other like um, idea you could, or any other theme you could like propose, you're welcome to do that. But I thought we could talk about art, for example, and I'm going to give you a scenario of an, of a project that is like, it's, it's an art project and they are trying to, they attended a workshop like that and they are trying to integrate environmental knowledge uh, or environmental themes into their workshop. Um, here is the scenario. Um, let's take maybe three or four minutes to read it and then think out loud on how could they start? What questions they could ask themselves to start um, working on ideas for, I think they're working on exhibition. Yes. How can they start? Are you comfortable with having like three to four minutes? Thumbs up. Cool. If you have any questions, uh, please just put them in the chat or just open your mic and ask. Sorry. Okay, um, you can go Abu Bakr. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. How about you, everyone? Alhamdulillah, good. Actually, uh, it is better if you speak slowly, it is better to understand everyone. So. I request it to you, please I speak slowly. Okay, Thank I'm sorry. So Thank you. Um, I send out the slides if anyone needs them. Uh, maybe you could email me or Shadon and then um, we could send them to you. And then um, if you have any questions, you could also reach out to me. Um, Hamad? Hello, everyone. Um, so maybe one idea would be instead of printing brochures, um, we might give away just uh, like small cards with the QR code. But uh, I saw once um, Al Qatan uh, Library in Ramallah did this. Um, they printed them on uh, on like a piece of paper, but it's recycled and it has like uh, seeds. So you can take the the card and you can after you scan it, you can just plant it anywhere. And like have uh, have a plan to remember and to care about, <laughs> so that could be uh, a good thing. 
that's a very nice idea. Thank you. I've, I think I've seen these invitations before. So they send out invitations um, that are made from recycled paper and they put, as Muhammad said, seats in them. So people can, instead of throwing them away in the garbage, plant them anywhere. Um, that's a great idea. Thank you, Muhammad. Does anyone else have any other ideas? Sorry, I have to open the chat maybe. Do we need like one or two minutes more? Okay, I'll go in like a couple of seconds. Um, you can go, Ruth. Um, Hi. Hi. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm more focused on, on the actual day of the administration. So what I was thinking is, personally, um, when um, planning the exhibition, or they would probably, I'm assuming, do sustainable art that they want to exhibit. Um, so I was thinking that on the day when engaging with the audience, they can then have like stories for the art and relate them to different environmental issues so then now when everybody's coming to listen to the different art um that's there they can then see a connection to the art and the environmental issues and i feel like in that way they will be able to leave with like a deeper impact i'm not sure thank you that's a great idea it's actually one of the things i've been thinking of and we'll be like um elaborating on in a bit um, we have, sorry, Shadon, yeah, you can go. Thank you, Bissan. Uh, and thank you for this uh, really amazing scenario. I was thinking uh, to your point earlier, when you mentioned that it is important to also be in touch with the environment, like physically in touch with the environment. So it would be nice to incorporate an activity or two outdoors where students or um, people who are attending this um, uh, uh, annual exhibition can do something with their own hands, whether they can participate in putting together an art mural out of recycled um, uh, things that we can find uh, in campus. And this is how we also um, make sure that we encourage them to start thinking about recycling and reducing their waste uh, and so on and so forth. Thank you, Shadon. That's great. Do you see like when we meet together or try to discuss things together, many ideas come up to our minds. Um, so that's great. Hi, Mariam. Thank you for joining. Mariam actually is Hi, the Lisa. founder of EcoEQB. I'm very pleased to have you here, Mariam. Thank you so much. I just got home and I was like, Bissan's having a presentation. I should... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Bissan, for organizing this event. Uh, so regarding the scenario, uh, I thought of something. Uh, do you remember once we did something about fast fashion and uh, it's possible to do something on this subject, like many people may have some extra clothes, bring them together and make a fashion show out of those, uh, like recycled, those clothes, you can recycle them, maybe uh, cut them in a certain ways and then make a runway and that could be in collaboration with an arts club. That's great. That's an awesome idea. Uh, it's like a, a like a small fashion show, let's say. <laughs> Thank you, Mariam, for this great idea. Um, so um, do you, you can see now how uh, when we like, again, uh, discuss things together, we come up with um, more creative ideas. Um, and this is only for one project, one theme. Um, so first, um, key questions one could ask if we are going to go like, to think about like practical questions. Um, what specific environmental message should this exhibition convey? Um, should we focus what or what environmental issues do we want to focus on? Um, you can focus on um, global environmental issues or think and do like do some research and think of environmental issues that are um, local that are around you that you face every day. Um, if you don't have any idea, you can ask, for example, a professor in your college, someone, a colleague that works with you or studies with you. Um, it's always nice to um, grab uh, people's attention um, when you work on something that's relatable to them. 
Um, then we can think about the exhibition style. How can the artwork itself emphasize environmental issues? Are we going to make the whole exhibition about environmental issues or maybe include some uh, a couple of artworks um, that like represent oh. um, an environmental theme? Um, moreover, the audience engagement. How can we make the event interactive and more informative? Um, eco stations, for example, if you don't want to make the whole event about um, like environment, you can have eco an eco station where um, like interested uh, people um, can go and like can attend and participate and on like in small hands on um, activities since an, it's an art uh, project. Uh, and also consider audiovisual experiences like short films, uh, climate theme music, and there are many projects online, and I can share one of them here, the Anthropocene Project, if you search it online, you can see how they integrate science into filmmaking, into, um, into AI, um, into many other things um, that people can collaborate on. Uh, one of the things that you guys mentioned is event setting. Um, could, you could ask yourself a question. Could the venue reflect the environmental theme? Can we have the, can we, is it feasible to have our event uh, outdoors or in a green building, for example, if there are any green buildings around your um, like uh, intended place? Uh, so these are all like some of the questions that you could start asking yourself when you think about um, integrating environment into your project, into different projects. And I'm sure you're working on amazing projects and it's very, uh, now impactful to keep thinking on how to get the environment into it um, in a simple um, way uh, that's not like causing you um, to stress about it or anything. It's just we need to keep now thinking of environment as it's in everywhere. Companies should have, for example, an environmental sector um, all the time. Uh, so this is what I was thinking uh, about integrating environmental um, issues in, in our different projects from different sectors. We can have, if you want a scenario in business or human rights, technology, whatever. Um, but before I wrap up, uh, Shadon, if you could possibly, I'm sorry, you could possibly share the Padlet link uh, to the chat. So I've created a Padlet uh, post uh, for us to engage more, meet more. And then if you don't have any ideas now, just share your ideas later in the Padlet. Think of it as a safe place where um, you can ask questions on how to, if you're interested in the topic, integrate um, nature into your project or environment into your project, climate change, if you want to be more specific um, into your projects, talk more about your projects and like, let's inspire each other in, in that Padlet. Uh, and like keep getting your green on as the title of the workshop suggests. Um, and I'm also happy to answer any of your questions. You can reach out to me via email or WhatsApp. And just uh, a small challenge for you. Uh, if you are currently working on a project and this workshop uh, or like inspired you to, to think about an environmental challenge around you, uh, to integrate and to add into your project, just send us pictures to EcoEQB and we'll be posting them on our account or like post them on the Padlet and we'll also post them on, on our Instagram page. Uh, we'll be happy to see all your um, like creative ideas. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope that was light um, and like uh, you like you like uh, left with um, good points or new points uh, about how to, again, <laughs> integrate environmental issues into your projects. This is the words I, I'm going to like be repeating all the time. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer all of them. And I'm happy to see that we have a, like, a big number of audience today. Thank you so much all for coming. Uh, yeah, if you have any question, we still have time. Um, Faisal Islam. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful for you to have a session like this environmental issue. And also, I am learning about environment in our school. So very thankful I am. So, ma'am, I just want to know and about Osun. What you said Osun, and something more about Osun. 
if you like, please tell me about something awesome. Uh, so you mean I mentioned something about awesome that you'd like me to repeat, if I understand correctly, right, Shadam? So yes, I was saying me. that um, most of us are coming through Olsen, if I'm not mistaken. And one of the core values of Olsen that they keep like bringing up all the time is civic engagement. Um, and civic engagement, um, or thinking about civic engagement and how to be civically engaged inspires us to um, be kind of um, participate more in global challenges and also um, have an ethical like kind of responsibility to um, to integrate or help others with also their projects and their approaches. Um, so yeah, this is what I mentioned about Olson. Oh, come um, Thank you very much. Chris, I hope I answered. Uh, Shakila? Oh, uh, well, I have a question. Uh, about this, for example, in case uh, I want to apply for any scholarship, so can I just um, engage that personal statement uh, with the environmental sphere like that? Will it be a plus point? I think, yes, Shadon would help us Is also. Is my question in clear? Yeah. It's it's clear. I guess you want to know if uh if you're submitting an application for your project and you uh want to say that you focus also on environmental challenges, would it be a plus or not? Yes, it would definitely be a plus. As I said, many organizations and institutions are now focusing on um having um like sustainability goals um in their um like with their collaborators. Uh, so it's definitely gonna be a plus for you. Um, if you know how to align it perfectly with your project, if it's not an environmental project. Um, so yeah, I hope I answered your question. Uh, well, uh, I mean, for example, I want to apply for a scholarship. Uh, it is uh, related to economic governance, right? So can I kind of, um, relate my personal statement and uh, that filled with the environment that the policies should be more sustainable? Definitely you can. Like there are many ways to connect um, economics, uh, global economics to environmental change or climate change around. Um, so definitely, yes, you can do it. Um, you can... Yeah, Shadon, do you have something to add? Like, I feel that you have something to add on that. Thank you so much, Bissan. Uh, for students who are, have some questions about OSIN opportunities and so on, maybe you can drop your emails below and I will reach out via email, provide you with more information. But I'm also going to include the website of OSIN, which has a number of opportunities that uh, you can apply for and you can workshops like that that you can join. Um, let us have more questions about the content that uh, the amazing Bissan has just delivered. So uh, we have some uh, more time for questions. So please feel free to uh, drop yours in the chat box or ask uh, by unmuting yourself. We have a question from John. John, please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Thank you for giving me this such kind of chance. So my name is John Amanya from Kenya. And I was, to, I have a project about, uh, concerning about the environmental issue, which is called Solar Light Security Tower. And I was even, I was, I, I, I have another in it before. I got another link for the, fun but uh, i didn't since that time i didn't get the the information or about the project i wrote thank you yeah John. yes we, we will be in touch uh, via email as well if you're asking about a certain opportunity but uh let's uh try to direct our questions to Bissan um, uh, about the PowerPoint that she has just delivered. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to ask them now. Um, we have some 10, 10 minutes left, so. 
also if you want to share your experience if you have an environmental project or you ever create like integrated environmental issues into your uh, civic engagement project um you could definitely share it with us if you feel comfortable with that um abu bakar Assalamu alaikum. I am Abu Kusudi from the world largest repository of Kosovo's Bazar Bangladesh. Actually, thank you so much, ma'am, for your representative. Uh, the whole class among of us. Actually, my question is, if I make a project in, in my environments, first of all, how to make the plan? But I can't make a project due to the uh, environmental issue. First of all, how to make the plan? Please, if you can please explain me. Um, so you're asking, if I understand correctly, you're asking on how to make that plan if you have an environmental issue you want to work on, right? So um, yes. first of all, um, you should have, you should do some research on that environmental issue. Like you can't start working on something without really knowing what what is that thing, what is that issue, who is the causative of that issue, and how can we solve it if there is a solution or a feasible solution that you could work on. So that this is the first um, step. You need to do research to ask um, experts around you if there are any experts. And then you need to think how would your project um, help um, in that problem how, or help ad address that problem uh, in any way. Um, have a clear mission and vision for your project. And then start thinking who your audience is, who do you want to like go to um, to address the issue. Um, and then maybe um, recruit a team and then start planning. What is the best way to address this issue? Is it through giving lectures? Is it through giving games? Is it through doing some visits um, to places that are affected from this environmental issue? Um, is it through doing some scientific research or more scientific research on, on that issue? Um, so this is how you definitely start. Just know the problem first well, then you're gonna know how to find a solution to it or how to to try to help in, in addressing it. I hope Thank I Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your great explanation. Thank you. Um, Ruth. Hi, good day, everyone, again. Um, so I just, I have a kind of specific question. So for example, if you made a work book, like a worksheet for your project and you have like a set time to speak to these kids, but you also have other activities planned out and your worksheet is very like, like hefty and you know that it won't be enough time to talk to the kids, do your activities, plant whatever trees you have to plant. So I was wondering if you have any advice on how to cut down a worksheet. Because you know it's when you you're the creator, it's hard to see what you can take out because everything seems so important. You know, like any advice to cut it down or if there is any um group of people online to reach out to to help or something like that. Thank you for your specific question. Um and it's something we all love. It's very relatable. And actually, Shadim before this workshop said, Hassan, if you couldn't deliver all the ideas, just like talk about the very important ideas that you feel are important to deliver. So um, maybe you could suggest having another event or session with them. Like don't plan, for example, one session. From the beginning, have the plan set on having different visits to that place or to these children. Um, that's um, one. Two, Try to integrate the important work um, in the like worksheet that you're uh, talking about into the activities that you're doing. Try to mix up things together. And then when you're gonna have, you're gonna find some things are being repeated because some things are mentioned in the worksheet and then the activities afterward. And then you're gonna have to uh, take out these like repetition parts uh, from the work. Um, so you're gonna have a more like finalized, um like approach to it um so yeah just think of 
um, the mission and like, why are you doing this? Keep thinking and keep coming to the question of why are you doing this activity? And then you're gonna always come back to the core ideas and the important ideas that you want to deliver and like be away from the ideas that need much time and that not as important as the important or the main activity. Um, I hope I answered your question. And if you're, you are you asked about people to reach out, definitely folks at OSEN could help in that. And you could also reach out to me or to any of the global fellows uh, of Olsen, Shadon, maybe you could share, or Christina, if you're still here, please share the Global Fellows page. Christina is a Global Fellow too. Um, so Yes, I can actually do that. I'll share the website of our uh, Global Engagement Fellows here in the chat box, and you could always refer to us like by emailing us, depending on your uh, preferences, and we're happy to answer you. Thank you. Definitely. I hope you answered your question, Ruth, and thank you so much again for your question. Um, yes, thank you. Or, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Bissan, for this eye-opening workshop and providing uh, these practical step-by-step -step guidelines into how to integrate environmental sustainability and how to bring more exposure to climate action uh, to our existing civic engagement projects and pursuits. Uh, my question is related to branching out. So I uh, have known uh, you at AQB to be very ambitious and the team of yours uh, and the success that you were able to make on a very short notice, uh, expanding the list of stakeholders that you're engaging to, uh, community uh, innovators or people who are re you reaching out to for collaboration. And I was thinking about um, if you have a set of ad advice, um, on how to identify and uh, connect with stakeholders who are already working in the field of uh, climate change or environmental sustainability and how to build this relationship for collaboration and partnership, which would bring more exposure to your work. Um, um Thank you, Shadan. Um, and Faisal, um, I'm happy to answer your question uh, when I answer this question. I'm sorry we kept you like, um, so um, first about the like the stakeholders thing, I'd like to thank Mariam too, because she has set the foundation for AQB stakeholders and um, like collaborators. And she was the first one to think of AQB as uh, in the bigger part and in the bigger picture. So thank you, Mariam. Um, so um, to your question, Shadon, um, I think um, we all start small. Uh, we're very ambitious, I know, with our projects, but starting small um, with clear steps is uh, the core thing. So collaborators and stakeholders, when they want to work with you, they want to see someone who has a clear, ambitious plan, um, someone who has a future uh, or thinks of a future of their project. Um, so it's definitely important to work on, again, on the mission, on the vision, on the goals, and the, like, set um, a solid foundation for your project. Um, then when you you start working, you're going to be noticed. And definitely keep thinking of collaborators and collaborations along the way. If you can collaborate with, like, collaborate with as much as you can people um, and organizations and clubs around you because it's gonna help give a picture of your project and, and ideas. And then people are gonna ask for you then, instead of you going to, to them and asking them for collaboration. Um, so I think these are the things um, I think about when I think of like getting my project bigger um, and involving more people. Um, I hope I answered your question. Um, Faisal Islam, if you still have the question, we're happy to hear it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, what I'm, what I want to say is, we are living in a in a refugee camp, which is very crowded and very narrow, and there is very lack of a space, and our shelters are very near one and another. So our environment is de uh, decreasing the quality of our environment. That some of them are, there are many common of landslide flooding, and also. Many are cut down the trees to set up a shelter and also other spreading herbicide 
insecticide in our environment recklessly, carelessly. So there are also many dirty and garbage which are spreading all over the camp. And also it's very dirty place to live. So as I'm a student of secondary school, I'm a secondary student, what can I do for my environment to develop, I mean, to save from this uh, custody, from this, uh, from this dirty? What can I do, man? Um, thank you so much for your question. Um, and I'm very happy that you're thinking of how you can um, make a change uh, in these hard situations. Um, uh, you, when you were talking, you mentioned the garbage problem. And that's the first step. You actually address a problem that you want to work on or you think of. So you can start from there. Um, you can go around the camp, um, see, um, like, research the extent of that problem with the resources you have and then start with gathering um maybe your friends your colleagues whoever is interested in working on that problem too and then form a team and maybe you could start by an awareness campaign um one of the one of the days you can go out and like try to clean the areas around your house for example so start small, start by um, by a plan to raise awareness, and then you do it by your hand. Um, you go around and talk to people uh, and try to talk to people also outside the camp um, to help. Uh, people will definitely see if you're making a change in that small area that you sh chose, then the change will get bigger and people will get inspired and you're gonna have more and more students um, collaborating with you and um, like what you're doing is going to be addressed very well. Um, I hope you answered, uh, I answered your question um, and I'm very happy you addressed it. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bissan. This was all very inspiring. And um, this is unfortunately all the time that we have for today, but I think this is such an important topic. But Mariam, yeah, please go ahead. I did not see your hand earlier. But go ahead. Yeah, I question. just raised it. Uh, no, I wanted Tawan uh, Bisan. Thank you so much for the great answer. It was actually um, so that was one of the first things that I thought of. And Faizul, uh, I have uh, I'd like to say that also in Palestine, uh, our situation is not also the best. We also live in refugee camps. We have waste everywhere. Uh, and this is not because uh, we do have, we are facing occupation and military checkpoints. And this is all impacting our environment in a, lo uh, in a lot of different ways. But think of it as a motivation to be creative and to bring change in creative ways. So one of the examples that we worked on in ECHO EQB was, uh, now, on campus, on in university, we would get attacked by Israeli soldiers and they would throw tear gas bombs at us. And so what we did uh, in response, we took these tear gas bombs, we painted them, and uh, we wanted to plant uh, some plants in them, but that would be harmful for their environment. But in in so we we tried to respond to the challenges that we face, and I uh, advise you to use the situation that you're the environment around you to come up with creative uh, solutions. One of them, as Bissan said, uh, try to engage your community in, for example, cleaning some areas, making some area, planting maybe plants in certain areas where people can start going there, spending some more time there, maybe make uh, a playground for children. And step by step, the community itself will start uh, contributing to environmental change. So I highly encourage you that. And there's a lot of examples on the internet as well. The internet is free. You can look up a lot of ideas online. So thank you, Faisal, for, uh, um, what's it called? For, for really caring about your environment. We're very happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mariam, for also shedding a light on what is happening in Palestine. Of course, the complexities of um, um, protracted military occupation and uh, what does what does this do to 
and the environment and the loss of biodiversity is a very urgent and important topic. And Bisan shed light on that towards the very beginning of her presentation. And Maryam just highlighted that in the comments, uh, in her comment now. So for those of you who are joining us from all around the world, it's also important to be educated and learn about what is happening in different areas of the world and how you can be the change and um, be the voice uh, to put an end to the injustices. So feel free to also um, add your email, uh, Bisan, again, in the chat box. And Miriam, if you also want to add uh, your email and other global fellows or uh, students from the OSIN network, let's create this um, sh shared space where we can touch back and learn from each other's experiences um, and use this as a um, platform to uh, try to identify um, best practices and how we can all work together to bring about positive and meaningful contributions to our communities, whether in Palestine or Rohingya or uh, in other parts of the world. I want to thank Bisan again for this uh, inspirational uh, workshop. I know I learned so much from your strategy on how you break down all of these important steps and how you remind us that uh, it is our call to do something and put an end um, to uh, the injustices or put an end to a grave issue that is uh, doing so much harm to our environment, uh, our environment, and I uh, say it uh, um, with this pronoun. And it's also important uh, the way that you broke down this um, material, uh, you really showed us how to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And this is very important, uh, specifically when it comes to the field of environmental sustainability. So thanks again. Uh, we This is all the time that we have for today, but I will be in touch soon via email and you can be in touch with Bisan for uh, resources and continued conversation. And we hope to see you next time uh, in our upcoming uh, workshop. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. And have a great rest of your day, your evening. And we'll touch uh, base soon. Thank you all. Thank you, Member. Thank you very much. Thank you.